How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris BSO here. I'm excited to share with you PCI Express 5.0 and VME 2.0. It is finally released and I have it here in my hands and we could test it out to see if it really makes that much of a performance difference when it comes to PC gaming. I know all of you want to see it in action and just to give you an idea of how much of a beast Gigabyte's ORS VME 2.0 is, it actually has DDR4 SD RAM in there. It is a 3D NAND technology where it is eight layers and it has a sequential read speed of up to 10,000 megabytes because it is two terabytes. And it also has a sequential write speed of up to 9,500 megabytes, which is crazy. I would love to see this in action. As you know, I have MSI Spadium M480, which has been a great beast. I will compare the two performance wise to see exactly how much of a difference it does make. We'll test out sequential reads, sequential write speeds, and we will also check out if it boots up the PC any quicker and how will it perform when it comes into loading into games, which is important. If you're not too sure how to switch out your new NVMe PCI Express 5.0, make sure you check out the card right above. And the best part is this guide is completely free. So you won't have to buy any extra software in order for you to switch your NVMe over to this next primary drive, which I can't wait to do. So without further ado, let's unbox this. But just to let you know, I did purchase this on Newegg and to my dismay, I didn't really look at it closely. It looks like the seal has already been broken as you can see here. And the seal hasn't been broken on just one side, but on two, which really makes me a little bit nervous, but hopefully everything is okay. But let's open this up here good thing is it looks like at least the seal in the box is actually sealed still as you can see here and let's take a look it doesn't have AES 256 bit encryption unfortunately but it does have DDR4 SD RAM which will make and boost the NVMe even quicker when it comes to loading speeds so when you first open up the box it comes in a beautiful foam package you don't have to worry about it going anywhere. You can see how awesome that looks. The crazy part is the operating temperature for this or the average operating temperature should be 70 degrees Celsius. It's not too much different when you compare it to PCI Express 4.0, which is impressive. You would think it would get more hot, but who knows until we actually start testing it. Under the box here, you'll have another foam insert, which more than likely will enter into the heatsink. The heat sink, I, I believe, is a little bit massive and just and it does look like it probably dissipates quite a bit of heat because not only does it come, it, you can see how large it is. Don't try to attempt to put this in your PS5 because more than likely it won't, you'll have ish, heating issues. Just so you can get an idea, let me try to pull this out so you can take a look at it for yourself. More than likely, I'm not going to end up using this heat sink anyway because my motherboard is compatible. It does come with a M2, the M2 screws in plastic. It's kind of tucked in between the heatsink here. The quality of this looks great. It looks like it's like one screw that they give you from what I see. And they also give you this massive heatsink as you can see. Pretty wild, right? And you get the regular heatsink style that you're used to seeing right underneath of it and it does come with the thermal paste if necessary so this is a great accessory if your motherboard doesn't have the coverage uh, where it doesn't cool off your m2 drive so make sure you install this if you don't have coolers on your motherboard to do this because then it would really suck if you install this and then your MME starts heating up, you will end up voiding your warranty because just all because you chose not to install this heatsink. Without further ado, let's go ahead and install it. And if you have any questions at all or need any references, please let me know in the comments down below because I would love to hear from you guys. So the first step, you wanna make sure to disconnect and shut off your power supply. And you're also gonna need a handy dandy tool. And all you need is a small Phillips head screwdriver 
to where you are able to unmount your old SSD so that way it can work properly. So let's go ahead and do this. Luckily we can access the M2 drive right here. We just have to remove those two screws right there. You see it's much more thicker. Make sure it's inserted fully in because it would suck to go back under here. Now we can simply reinstall the heatsink. And that simple, it is now secure in. Let's boot it up and see how it does. Everything booted up perfectly fine. Now we are just going to restore the image into the brand new MVME 2.0 and we're excited. Let's see what type of boot times and what type of benchmarks we'll pull out of this drive. Thank you. 
Bam Bam, we got Gigabyte's Ors NVMe PCI Express 5.0 installed, and you can see how much of an improvement it is over its predecessor. It's not really its predecessor, but MSI's PCI Express 4.0, you can see the difference in load times and read speeds, and especially the write speeds. I gotta say, I am pretty impressed with this NVMe. I wouldn't think I would see this much of a large difference. Even though it isn't really doubling in speeds, you can see it nearly doubled when it comes to booting into Windows. Or when you actually log into Windows, you can see how much of an improvement it is. Even though I mentioned that it was the same load times, it's impressive because this is the first boot of Windows versus a everyday boot of Windows when it comes to a SSD that's already been broken in when it comes to the applications or software that loads up into it. When we loaded up Gigabytes, it was the same load time getting those applications and software to boot back up and to reapply all the software such as my wallpaper engine and IQ and every other software. When it came to Crystal Benchmark, you could see a 3000 megabytes per second improvement over read and write speeds. When you opened up games, you could see a big improvement when it came to load times. The only time where it didn't beat it was when it entered Control. Control actually loaded up a little quicker on PCI Express 4.0 for some odd reason at that time. Overall, you can see how much of an improvement it was after Cyberpunk 2077 opened up, it was nearly double the load time when it came down to it. You can see when you enter into a game, you can see that it is a big improvement and the average FPS is also a large phenomenal improvement. So if you're looking to get the edge of gaming, or even if you are a content creator, if you're a graphic designer and you wanna get the fastest speeds, I gotta highly recommend purchasing a NVMe PCI Express 5.0 because you could see such a large scale difference. You're getting over 10,000 megabytes per second of speed and you can really experience it. But if you're not really that much of a competitive gamer, then it's not really gonna matter that much. It's actually not gonna be that notable, especially if you don't boot up your PC all the time and you just warm up your PC and you enter into your regular games. This isn't for your just average Minecraft player. If you are looking to be more competitive, I would highly suggest to go for PCI Express 5.0. And if you're looking for it, make sure you check down in the description box down below as I have it. The only negative side I got to say about NVMe 2.0 is that you will notice that the, the temperatures are a bit higher. You're talking about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius higher compared to the predecessor of PCI Express 4. As I said earlier, the normal operating temperatures for PCI Express 5.0 is about 70 degrees Celsius. And it was the same when it came to PCI Express 4.0 when it first was released and it was hard to keep those temperatures cool. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is interested in NVMEs, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and for all the newest updates. Make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here because it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So fan band guys, what are your personal thoughts about PCI Express 5.0? Does that tempt you to get it? Or is it something that you could wait for? Or maybe you just want something a little bit quicker. Maybe you're looking for the NVMe 2.0s where they can go up to 12,000 to 13,000 megabytes, which could very well happen pretty soon. We'll find out in time. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Bidow, signing out.